happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me to a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So last night we started our garden embroidery. We got like a little tree in there. Here's the final design. <laughs> so uh, we're going to work on that a little bit more today. Uh, we'll definitely get those trees done, I think, and maybe some of the fence. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, we're going to just take away at this more tonight. I think it'll be fun. So thanks again for joining. Let's get going. All right. Here we are. Here we are. All right. So where we got to last night, uh, we got our first little tree kind of going. We got leaves on them. We need to put the, um, the, uh, I don't know, I guess let's call them apples, the little apples on. And then uh, I thought we'd, uh, before that, I thought we'd do the leaves on this guy. And I think we're all prepped for that. Yeah, we we got the um, this thread all ready. So all we have to do is just start the leaves right away. So that's kind of nice. Ooh, let me scroll down on the comments here for a sec. Hello, everyone. Hey, Adrian, Gretchen, and Catherine. I see you guys popping in. I see Robin. Nice to see everyone. All right, so this is the leftover thread that we have from last night. It's not that much, but uh, we'll get a few leaves out of it. We won't get all of them, that's for sure. So we're doing more of those single chain stitches that we did last night. Hey, Amy. Ugh, I thought that felt funny. I'm already, already uh, accidentally pulling the thread out of the needle. Kind of do that every time we get this to this length of thread. Ooh, Gretchen says, I love the colors on mine, but I'm thinking about doing this in all red. Oh, that would be fun. I love that idea of doing a whole red work. Um, God, that would re look really nice with this one, I think. Especially if it, you were doing it like in a collection of like a bunch of other kind of gardeny, you know, plants, floral, kitcheny type type motifs. Uh, just all all in red work would be so pretty. Oh, you're thinking about all making them all the monthly ones in red work. Ooh! I freaking love that idea. Alright, I'm gonna go like now that I have a little less thread, I'm gonna do I'm gonna go the sewing method where I go in and out in the same motion. You can do that too, as long as you still come up in the middle of that circle. So you can still tack it down a little bit here. Ooh, red work. That's a great idea. So red work, um, for anyone wondering, is... I know there's a history to it, and I don't know that offhand, but um, it's when you do a design all with red floss. Uh, there's also blue work, where you do it all in blue floss, and then black work, which is all, all black floss. But black work has some other stuff going on with it. I think there's some certain styles that... Um, like when you say black work to like an embroidery historian or something, they're going to think of it more than just doing things in black. I think there's like special designs and stuff, like more geometric sort of border type stuff that black work fits into as well. Ooh, Nate, I'm glad you're here. Uh, so there's, there's a little bit more of that in, in some of that. I'm gonna have to do, do a little history searching on red work, blue work, and, and black work. And I'm, I mean, you really could do anything in one color. It always seems like a little scary, I feel like, doing it in one color, but it always looks so like classic and, and just pretty before, or um, when it's done. Oop, lost my thread again. Not paying attention. Let's do that pinch method of threading again. So pinch and then release. And then the moment I see that thread, I'm going to stick the needle on top, squish it through and pull it on through. I think I can get one more stitch out of here. This is pretty short. And these lazy daisies are these single chain stitches, which are basically a component of a lazy daisy. They're, they take up a lot of floss here. 
All right, there we are. Let's weave in that end and we'll get a new piece of green going and let's finish up these leaves. Then we'll move on to some colorful French knots for, I guess one would be kind of like an apple tree and then the other one I'm thinking, I'm imagining it as like a little pear tree. We have a neighbor um, where we walk around in our little neighborhood um, that has a bunch of fruit trees right in front and I think it's two apples and a pear and that's kind of what I think about with this. All right, I got my long piece of thread. We're doing that that loop method of starting uh, with two strands. So I've, I've doubled up my thread here and I'm getting just the one really long thread and we'll be folding it in half to create our two strands. There we go. Hey, Water Plus Inc. Nice to see you. All right, so there we go. There's one end, here's the other. I'm gonna match those and that's what I'm gonna thread is the, the like, raw ends here you guys it is uh john and i my geez neither that's right john and my geez english um anniversary wedding anniversary today we just got back from uh, going out to have pizza at a, at a place i haven't been before so that was really fun all right, so I got my two ends threaded here, and on this side, I have my folded edge, and that's what I'm gonna use uh, to do the loop method. And I'm gonna just kind of loop around strands that already exist. So I'm just gonna loop around the back there, and then grab that loop. I'm gonna go in where that folded edge was, and then just pull tight, and that's all we have to do to attach our thread. Um, so that's kind of a variation on the loop method. We'll go over the loop method again from scratch later, but um, the loop method of starting works best, like on backstitch and that sort of thing. Um, stitches where you have to go back in the same hole right away don't work as well for, for the loop method. So that's why I looped it around stitches that already are there. Ooh, thanks for the anniversary which wishes. I think it's our 19th wedding anniversary if we if math works. Although now that I think of it, did I really check to see? I don't know. That seems, that seems like a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should recheck that, but I think it's been that long. Oh, Adrian says, I did red work embroidery with Santa's a few years ago, made into a quilt. Super fun. Oh, that's fun. Oh, and that makes me think of, uh, Jenna is doing, uh, um, a blue work of all like snowmen doing fun things working on a quilt like that it's just just an extra little bit of classiness i think with those all one color things it's just fun oh it's fun to do like tons of colors too it's just a different look right so it's it's fun to try My, oh, your 19th is coming up in uh, November 9th, 18th. Uh, we got married in 2003, so I think that's when we did. <laughs> oh my god. I always have to check. <clears throat> I always have to check uh, this little... I made like a little mini portrait of um, John and me. And we have one frame, and it has the date. I always have to look at that. Because the three always throws me. <laughs> so... Um, and I don't, I don't think it would have been 2013. I think that, I think we've been together longer than that. So I think it is 2003. I don't know. I'm just, now you got me second guessing. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to like look at that again for sure. And, and, uh, report back. I feel like, uh, I don't know. I feel like my only memory, like I, <laughs> I only can think of like present things and then like it all goes away. I have to write everything down now. It just, I don't know. And I just confuse myself. So I don't know. I think it's 2003 though. Yeah. 98, 
2001, two. So that would have been like a year after graduating college, which sounds like it would make sense. So I think, yeah, that, that would make sense. <laughs> so I think it is 2003. It just sounds like so long ago, you guys. Oh my God. Okay, my mom came on. I was I was thinking maybe mom will come on <laughs> and say it. She's like, OMG, 2003. So. <laughs> I knew she would know. <laughs> I'm thinking I, I got that tone correct, too. OMG, 2003. <laughs> oh, God. But we went on a few walks today, which is nice. But yeah, we went to a cute pizza place that John had gone to with some friends, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And it's actually where this pastry place was that we really liked, but that went out of business. I think that was like pre-COVID. So maybe it was like a COVID going out of business, which was a bummer. But like now there's a like a wood-fired pizza place there. And we like our wood fired pizza. We got we got a favorite place in town that's that's kind of close. And now now we just compare everything to that basically. So actually, I had to get a margarita pizza because I feel like I got to compare when I go to a new pizza place. I got to compare margarita pizzas like a classic, you know, limited ingredients. I gotta like compare those. And otherwise, we'll get like a mushroom one because there's there are a few mushroom pizzas in town that are like exceptional. So. I got to do my margarita pizza test and then uh, like the mushroom pizza test. But uh, John had the mushroom pizza when he was there with friends. So we wanted to try something else. So we, we just went with the margarita pizza and we, we shared a bunch. We didn't get, I mean, sometimes we'll get like a, a few pizzas and stuff, but like, I don't know. Kept our cool and just ordered one and got a big salad and stuff too. It was good though. I would definitely go back there. I would say compared to our uh, like go-to pizza place as far as margarita pizzas go, um, my f which is my favorite margarita pizza at that place. It it's almost like the best. Like imagine like it's winter outside and all you want is like some tomato soup. Um, that's warm and perfect and with some cheese that is like this good margarita pizza it's just so wonderful i love it and so i'm just comparing <laughs> all my margarita pizzas to that one so the one at this new place was pretty good too it was it was similar but like with more of like a roasted tomato um flavor like maybe a little more roasted garlicky or like roasted with like yeah like a tinge of burnt fire garlic in there it was pretty tasty but i don't know i still like my my good old um margarita pizza from the other place but i'd order it again for sure Ooh, gretchen made a uh, wild mushroom soup for dinner dang that's delicious so the bummer is so this the same pizza place that i really really love like our go-to pizza place the place we went today was great but like our go-to that's closer to us um they have a very good mushroom pizza but the bummer is that there's a better mushroom, um, better mushroom pizza in town, and uh, but the vibe of that place is not so good. Or not, I mean, it's it's totally fine, but it's not as good. So, um, but it's got that good mushroom pizza. Anywho, there we go. <laughs> A tour of, uh, of pizzas of, of, of Minneapolis. There are some very good pizza joints here. That is for sure. Whenever people come, we always end up at at least one of them. And we got several in walking distance too, which is fun. All right, you guys. We got another tree. All right, so let's do... Let's just, um, we'll do the French knots in this one and the French knots in this one. So we got, we get to do another color here. Let's get the red going. And uh, yeah, let's just keep on with this loop method. 
So I'm gonna get my like double piece so we can just keep pulling like single strands out of here. Okay, that's plenty good. That's like extra long. Let's shrink that up a little bit. About 18 inches or so doubled. That looks good. Oops, missed all the strands. I've been using my uh, the embroidery kit box as my tray for this, and I think that's working really nice so far. Then I can just like move around with it like wherever I need to. I mean, it's staying here, but I can at least shush it out of the way if I need to. All right. Chicago pizza, like pizza made in Chicago or like Chicago style, like that's kind of like deep dish, right? I'm sure I've had both before. It's been a long time though. Oh, Caitlin says I got married on 12, 13, 14. Uh, picked a date I could remember. That's freaking rad. That's, <laughs> that's kind of awesome. Uh, 12, 13, 14. All right, let's fold this in half. Ooh, St. Louis style pizza, Blue Moon. I, I don't know what specifically that is. Oh, dang, that sounds good. Blue Moon says, my 16 year old made Swedish meatballs and rice for supper. That sounds freaking delicious. Okay. Had to be like, okay, I got rid of my needle. What was my plan? And <laughs> yep, let's do these these French knots. So all of the French knots in this tree are red, and then this one is green, the the paler green. So um, the, our celery green, we haven't taken that out of the skein yet. Um, so I think we'll do those two, and then let's get this little purple um, treehouse right away, since we're kind of doing that. What's on the back of this? fence here behind this fence and then I think we'll do the fence we'll um the back fence at least we'll do the back um get these little crossbars in uh I'm actually gonna stitch what is gonna be behind all of these this is like I don't know like beans um I'm gonna stitch straight across there so that when we stitch these they will physically be on top of that line so that's that's kind of the plan all right, let, let's do this French knots. I'm totally getting ahead of myself, aren't I? All right, so for this, again, I'm going to just kind of loop around stitches that are already there. Since again, with the loop method, when you're going in the same spot or near the same spot like a French knot, it's a little difficult to do it. So luckily I have stitches already there. Let's just go into that fold, boop. And there we go. We are just like attached to the backs of those stitches. And that works good. All right. So let's get going. So these French knots will probably be a tinsy smaller than the ones we did on the newt last week, just because we are using two strands instead of three. But it still gives like a hefty look Ugh, they give so much dimension like these little french knots so a lot of times i will wait till the end of my embroidery to do the french knots just because it's annoying if they're pretty 3d so every once in a while i'll accidentally catch my thread on it like you know it'll just like catch on the 3d-ness of the french knot like that and that's annoying so sometimes i wait until the end to do French knots, but you know, if I'm working on a little area and it has French knots, I'll do the French knots. So that's kind of where we're at now. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. It adds just a lot of texture to this already. So I think I'm just kind of going counterclockwise around this tree. This is going quick, all these little French knots. Getting kind of twisty though already. I 
I did not today uh, work on that converting that um, baby quilt into a tote bag. So I'm going to have to really get on that tomorrow because I need it for Saturday <laughs> for a baby shower. So I got to get it done. Otherwise, it ain't happening. And actually, oh my God, it just happened so fast. I need to check out their Amazon wish list too and see if there's anything I should try and have delivered before we leave. That's like a day. Ay. But I'll be an aunt for the first time soon coming up here. Theoretically in September. Alright. There we go. Lots of little dudes there. Ooh, Amy says we have a place near us that makes a pizza called Mushroom Party. It has different types. Ah, oh, that sounds amazing. Uh, there's the one that we like in town. I mean, like, there's the two places that we like the mushroom pizza. Um, I think the one has kind of a variety, but the one that's just extra good, that's at um, at the place we don't go as often. But if I had to rate, if I had to rate pizza places in town, you know, the one place would be my favorite, but that we go to a lot, but the best mushroom pizza in town would be this other place. And they just use oyster mushrooms on the top. So it's just like freaking loaded. Like you can't even see anything else. It's just oyster mushrooms. And then literally, I think it's just like oil and garlic. And I think that's, that's basically it. Oh God, it's so good. That is a good one. Yum. The other one, the other place has arugula on it too, I think. But the one that's our favorite, gosh, I haven't had that in a few years either. That one like literally only has oyster mushrooms, I think. Oh my God. And it's so beautiful too, because that's like a lighter colored mushroom. So the whole entire pizza is just like this light color. It's like garlic colored almost. So you got like the garlic with the garlic colored um, mushroom. Oh my God, we're gonna have to go there again. We're gonna have to take a tour. So we were talking about that actually when we were at this new pizza place that we should just order <laughs> order the mushroom pizzas from the three places that we like and go pick them up, <laughs> like order them online or something. And we have to drive to each place to pick them up and then have like a little taste comparison, like a taste test of the three the three mushroom pizzas and like literally go <laughs> make three trips to get the, um, to get those three different pizzas. Oh, you only have chain pizzas by you by your house living in a small town in Kansas. Yeah, that's a bummer. I mean, we really are privileged for sure to have so many, I mean, in a city like this. So we're in Minneapolis um, or just like outside of it. So um, big city, we have like a very good variety of restaurants and, you know, great places all around town um, for all sorts of different types of food. And we literally have like, five grocery stores within like two miles I, it's just ridiculous like it really is um nice our little our little nook that we found ourselves in we're in like a first tier suburb um of the city Oh yeah, Paula, I know the printing is a bit light um what helps sometimes is like working on a just having it on a surface can help. And uh, otherwise we do have um, the dots as a reference here. I know it's a little, a little tough to see. We're working on, I'm testing some other fabrics to do our little transfer on uh, that might work better. So I'm hoping that'll improve in a little bit here, but yeah, they're, they're a little light for sure. So sorry about that. Um, it's, it's a bummer because it's nice on some sides, on some, like it's nice to have it light too because then uh, you can't see like any like super heavy dark lines uh when you're done but yeah i can for like a detailed piece like that it, it, like this one it's a little tough um so yeah just use use the this as a guide 
and um, yeah I'm hoping we can make that a little bit better in the future here Oh, that's a bummer, Blue Moon. I grew up in St. Louis, so I got used to authentic restaurants, and now it's all fast foods and chains. I know. Like, that's just... Um, we would love to do, like, a really good restaurant um, in a small town or something. We have no... There's, like, no way we'd actually do that. We have no experience in anything restaurant-related, and that just sounds so stressful. Like, the idea of, like, restaurant inventory sounds crazy to me like I don't know how anyone can manage that like that's just a whole different world for sure but yeah it'd be nice if you know every once in a while in some of these small towns you can find like these little hidden gems but you know a lot of times they're just you gotta like know about them they're just like they won't advertise or anything like that in a small town so it's all like word of mouth and i don't know definitely tougher for sure oh i like these little green ones these aren't like pear shaped but i'm gonna call them pears just because of the color you know it would have been fun to do like orange ones and have it be a peach tree an apple tree and a peach tree I watched a TikTok the other day for taking, like, getting the seed out of the peach pit so you could, um, you know, try and start growing it from there. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that because we got some peaches and they're so freaking delicious. And uh, I saved the pit and uh, you get a hammer and you break open the pit, but <laughs> I broke open the pit and broke the seed inside the pit at the same time. So I'm like, well... That didn't quite work out. So, now I don't have a potential peach tree anymore. <laughs> That'd be amazing, though, to get actual peaches from um, a peach pit eventually. I did, though, save some seeds from... Both from a pepper we just picked from our garden. I, um, I did that thing where you put them, the seeds like in a paper towel and then like get the paper towel wet and put it in a little baggie. I did that with that and I did it with um, some orange seeds the other day and the orange seeds I checked in the day just because I'm like they've been in there for a few days I don't want them getting moldy or anything so I switched the paper towel but one of them almost just about was gonna was breaking open and it looked like it was gonna get a a little stem popping out of it soon so I'm like ooh, maybe I'll have an orange tree and a peach tree just growing in my house how about that that'd be fun <laughs> oh blue moon that's not great uh, yeah that would put a kink into that for sure um, all right let's open up this purple I'm gonna do the little teeny tiny birdhouse here All right, and let's get, you know, I know I'm doing like a teeny piece here, but let's get our big dual piece again. I'm kind of like liking this process. The loop method. And this purple, actually, I don't think we have too much purple in this piece. Oh, there's, there's some little bits all around. All right, let's get one. Oh, Caitlin, that sounds awesome. Caitlin has a bunch of restaurant, cute restaurants, it sounds, in her small town. Ooh, Amy says, I did have a lemon lemon trees from a lemon. See, I just think it's so fun. Why not? I'll keep, I'll keep propagating things and planting things. Maybe this whole house will just be full of green stuff soon. That'd be fun. <laughs> we don't have all that sunlight, all the nice sunlight for all that, but, you know sometime all right so here is our little guy here I think I'm gonna do each one of these with one stitch so I'm gonna do that loop method now for real so I'm going in and out uh, without pulling all the way through and then I'm gonna flip it over 
and I'm gonna pull till I get to that fold in our, our thread and then I'm gonna bring the needle through that loop and we're just gonna kind of pull that and it's gonna hold, we're gonna catch our thread with that loop basically. And that's gonna hold in place, we're good to go. And let's just do single stitches for all these angles, I think. I feel like this is one of those things like, how do you draw the house without picking up your pen <laughs> sort of thing? I don't think we're gonna get that. And then we got one little French knot for the birdhouse hole. My parents have a teeny little house like this on, on their garden and it's of like a little mini ski lodge, which I think is cute. Ooh, Amy, I love that idea. Amy says, I started leaving my colors on the needle and grabbing a new needle if I need that color again. That's awesome. You know, we could do that like where, like we were doing that when we were doing that color painting or that, um, the thread painting, silk shading, that's the other other word for that. The silk shading or thread painting, I think it's the same thing. Uh, but we were doing that thing where we just like parked our needle a little ways up or like we went down and, and then like came up and then, then yeah, we're using a couple needles. That was kind of nice. That would kind of speed this up probably, having a bunch of needles going at once. Oops, I kind of missed a spot there, but I think, ugh, you know what, I'm going to take it out. Getting finicky here. It's usually after the half hour mark that my perfectionism wants to kick in. And I try to just, like, let's do it 80% good. That's, that's fine. Um, but the more tired I get, the more later it gets, the more I worry about those tiny little <laughs> mistakes. So... I missed the hole by like one thread, so I pulled it out and just redid it. So whatever, it's fine. All right, there we go. And we just need to do one little French knot in there. Alrighty, there we are. Let's fill in, or I was gonna say fill in the blanks here, but I meant um, weave in the ends. Oh, Jenna, that's what you did when you stitched this. You had a, a bunch of needles going and then just uh, switched. You know, just always had a, a color threaded. That's a good idea. That's smart. Boop. Alrighty. Now what? Oh, geez. This ran away from me. Okay. Um, so now I was going to do this fence since that's, we've kind of got like the back layer things and what's in front of that would be the fence. So like if we were thinking about this in real life, we have the trees in the background and then this fence and then like, you know, this garden stuff. And then eventually we have this fence. Um, so I'm kind of like working from back to front. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we finish this little bit. So we do this and then this fence part right here and maybe get like the little birds. Um, and then let's do, we'll start this, um, what are those called? Those little arches. Those are called something, I forget. But we'll do the little arch with the vines on and the bench underneath. We'll do like all that plus this fence. And then maybe we'll do the, the rocks right here too. Those are sand stitched rocks. And then we'll start working on the inside of the, the garden. I don't know. That's kind of kind of my thought process right now. The trellis. That's it, Arlene. A trellis. Okay. So let's. Oh, Genesis. Specifically for the fence, I'd start it, then keep it on the needle. 
because then I can, okay, so specifically for the fence, I'd start it, then keep it on the needle and stitch the things that were behind it with a different needle. Oh, that makes sense. So you'd stitch like these things and then like come back and stitch, stitch that. That makes sense. We'll see what we got for a thread for that. So I'm going to double this up again. Can't pick up the scissors. There we go. All right, and actually, I think, so I want to do this part of the fence too, I think. And then we'll let this part, we'll do that after. Or do I want to do that now too? Hmm. I think we'll just focus on this back area and we'll um, back fence and we'll worry about the trellis and stuff next. Um, so I think I'll just start here, go all the way down to here and then back and then we can work on these little side bits. Yeah, I think that's, that will work just fine. <laughs> I don't need to overthink it. So let's thread up and get going here. All right, let's start here. I'm going to do the, um, we're still doing the back stitch here. So I'm gonna just do one of those loop, loop methods of starting again. So let's flip to the back, catch that loop. I, I just love that. I think that's the coolest thing ever. So I'm, I have a feeling we'll be stitching this, this orange till we run out of it for sure. Uh, there, there's a lot of stitching to be done on this fence even this little back area. Oh gosh, that's looking crooked already. <laughs> I suppose that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to do the horizontal parts of this fence first, and then I'll come back and do all the posts. I think that's a decent way to do it. Yeah, the trellis will... I'll, I'll, I'm going to think about that as a whole other section to stitch. So I'm going to, I'm going to finish this back fence area and then I'll start thinking about the trellis zone. We'll call that zone two. All right, so here is where I'm coming up on this tree, which right now looks like it's in front of our fence, so once we stitch over the top of those stitches, it will look like our fence is in front of the tree, which is the whole reason we stitch the tree first. And you can totally st stitch this fence first, but to make the tree look behind the fence, you'd have to like go underneath this fence with your needle um, to stitch that, sing that stitch of the tree. But there, so I just crossed over it, so that's what's gonna make it, um, make the tree get like pushed to the background a little bit. So this will 100% run into next week for sure. I'm gonna try and be here Friday to stitch it uh, as well. So we'll stitch it all week this week. And then uh, I talked to Jenna, she stitched our sample and she said it took her about eight hours. So I'm thinking um, 
will at least go through Tuesday next week and uh, maybe even Wednesday or Thursday next week to finish this up. So this is definitely a bit more intricate than a lot of our other kits, but it's fun to do those every once in a while. Do some more intricate ones, then some simpler ones. Change things up a little bit here and there. I just like these little trees. Like these would be cute as their own little embroideries, just tiny trees. My gosh, I should just do an embroidery of tiny trees that you can stick on things. That'd be fun. Tiny trees. All right. We're going to cross over this birdhouse guy too. Then I think I will I'll stitch down. I'll get this French knot right away too. Oh wait a sec. Oh yeah, I'm not doing the front of the my brain was keeping on going <laughs> around while like, wait a sec, we're not doing that. We're just going from back to front. So the thing that's the furthest back to what's most in front. So I'm going to, we'll get this little bit down here and then I'll come up this way. Yeah. And then I think I'll go back and do all of these. Yeah. I think that's, that seems like it would make sense. Oh, cool. Amy says, I still have to do the oak leaves from last fall. I have it in my camping bag. I really like that design. That's, um, I think I have that nearby. Yeah, this, this guy here. I have my, this is my mending supplies. Or not necessarily mending, but the, those, um, that, those mending looms. Like that little loom. Uh, so you can do like that woven mending. That's my little... My case for that stuff, I figured that's something you do in fall, or you need accomplished in fall, all your mending, like your sweater's mended, so that's why I have it in the, the, um, that oak leaves zipper pouch. But yeah, I think that one's fun. The darning, that's it, jeez, I just have no vocabulary today. Yeah, my, my darning, um, bin... do let's do one more stitch and then I'll get that French knot because this little top of the fence has a French knot the corners have French knots on them for the fence the corner posts there we go and Get one more stitch here. Then I'm going to jump down to here and start the bottom line. So again, I'm, I'm just going to go all the way across, even across these other lines. And those other lines will actually be in front of these stitches later, which is what we want because they're more in front the design. And we will run out of thread here soon. Definitely before we finish this bottom part. And here too I'm going to cut across all these plants because those plants will be in front of this fence later. Man, you guys, I just, what's rolling in my head right now is like, how detailed do I want to get? Like, I could do, you know, I'm going to be doing these fence posts, but they will appear, like, in front of these lines, which means that whoever made this fence, 
was making putting the posts on the inside of the garden. So if I want those posts on the inside of the garden on these sides, theoretically I would do the posts first and then stitch the long bits later, except for this row I would do the back fence first, the horizontal, and then the front board. I mean, like, how how picky <laughs> do I want to get with, with that? Uh, then all the fence posts would look like they're on the inside and not the outside. <laughs> Maybe I will do that. Oh, Robin says, I was ahead of you when we started, and now I'm way behind. I am trying to, you know, when I do stitch live here, I do try and just, like, plow right through it. I am, I, I do feel like I'm going, going as fast as I can. Um, at least using the stitch I'm doing. Oh, the stabbing method. I think if I did the sewing method, maybe it'd go a hair faster, but I don't know. I like the ac accuracy of going like this. But I don't work on it on any off time either so <laughs> uh, to get it done in in the week and again this week I think we'll go over it for sure um, I do try and stitch a little fat fast through here but this is looking so cute this little back fence all right I'm out of thread so let's let's weave in it's cute from the back too weaving in my three times All right, and let's just get another piece of that orange, that pre-cut orange that we have. There we are. Match up those ends, and we'll start with that loop method again. That's just quick. I like it. Alrighty. Fill a little bit. There's our loop, but we got a fuzzle along the way there. All right. There we go. Nice and easy. Amy said she's cooking because it's an eight hour st stitch. Exactly. Exactly. I'm trying to go quick because we'll probably be doing this for eight hours, so a week and a half. But I'm more than happy to stop and talk about other random stuff and do like kind of how we were last night. I like that. Go this direction for a bit. Okay. Let's start getting these stakes here. So I just kind of went at the bottom here. I didn't go across that stitch, which would have made it look like it's in front. I don't know, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. These ones will go in front though, just because that makes sense. I don't know. Oh, I 
thought we froze on YouTube for a sec there, but I think we're good. All right, so let's think about tomorrow. All right, I'm literally gonna just like jump over to this next bit. Let's start up here, do this first stitch, and then we'll tie this little French knot. Um, but I think tomorrow we'll focus on that whole trellis area. So we'll do the bench, oops. Um, the bench, um, theoretically we'll get that vine and trellis done and maybe all the French knots too. So that whole area will take some time. So uh, that's the focus. If we get lucky, we'll finish that whole thing plus get some of these rocks done here, but I don't know if we'll get all that way. It's a pretty dense area of stitches, so who knows. That might be my favorite part. Although now that we've stitched these trees, I really like the trees too. That was fun. All right, next. Yeah, I don't think this will take us the whole way. So I'll probably stitch till, well, we'll see how it goes, but I'll probably stitch till I run out of this thread. And I don't know, we'll need a little bit more to finish. If I, if I don't have, well, if I have some posts to go over here yet, maybe I'll just leave them. Well, I don't know, we need those there to do before we can do this area. So we'll see, we'll just see how this goes. Let's see how far this takes us. But I was thinking like, oh, maybe I'll just stop when I'm done with this thread. And even if I have some stakes left, we'll just start on this area anyway tomorrow and come back to over here. Might just do that. But then I was thinking, but I do want these done before doing um, that little beans. Really, we can do whatever we want in whatever order. It's all going to be fine. The last stitch I'm doing like a forward stitch because that gets me ending up down by the bottom here. And then when I jump over, it'll be like in line with this bottom edge. So you won't see like the jump on the back really. We might get these two little guys behind the beans done, huh? Be nice. My grandma's garden had rows and rows of peony plants <coughs> and uh, potato plants. Peonies are always pretty. All right, I'm gonna accidentally pull this off any second. There we go. <laughs> Losing the the needle again. Hey, Kathy. All right, I might even get one more guy out of here. That's cool. This might actually be the perfect um, steak to finish on because this steak 
uh, because it's like one of those goofy isometric drawings, like a kind of like a like a like a game. Um, this line of this stake actually goes right into the line of this front stake. You can kind of see it here better. It's just like one straight line. So I think we can actually stitch that in one straight line. But I'll wait till we do the front piece for that, maybe. So we will run out of thread at just the right time, I think. One more stitch and we will weave in this end and call it a night. Little by little we're gonna get this guy done. But I would I would call it like quadrant one is done. <laughs> I call this like quadrant two. Then maybe, you know, the little rows are all separate and then this whole front fence and then the whole grass. I would call it like maybe that's the order. Quadrants we'll do this in zones. If I had to reveal my plan right now, that's what I think the order would go in. All right. So there is our progress for tonight. We added little apples and let's call them pears to the tree and we finished his leaves here and um, the little birdhouse and then got this fence in. So that's progress. So yeah, so tomorrow right away we will start up on um, this dude here. I think we'll start with the bench and then maybe do the trellis, or at least part of it, because there's parts where the trellis is in back and parts where it's in front a little bit. Yeah, like in here, it's a little bit in front. So this is where we might um, just have the thread on hand and then stitch some other stuff and then bring the thread back. Um, I think that'll make sense uh, when we do it tomorrow. So, all right, you guys. Oh, Kate and Cassie, you know, I was like, yep, so I'm here. I'll be here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow as well. So, uh, yep. <laughs> uh, so I'm just here an hour, typically. Um, sometimes I do come in over the weekends. Um, well, I won't this weekend, but uh, it would be nice to have, like, a just craft uh, weekend again here sometime, just doing a whole pile of stuff for for a longer period of time. I did that a little bit this past weekend and I filmed a bunch of it. I have to edit it all together though yet, but finish up, finishing up all these like little projects. Um, I'll have to share some of that um, maybe later in the week too. I got the granny square quilt uh, washed and done, except for I still need to do a label for it. So maybe we can discuss labels for the granny square quilt, but that's, that's off the plate pretty much. I'm happy about that, but all right. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Have a lovely, lovely evening. Um, if you uh, if you uh, want to check out the shop for the next 10, 15, 20 minutes or so, I'm going to have that live deal still, like where you, if you get $20 or more from the shop, I will throw in a free mystery gift. Um, I just look at the time stamp on it, so you don't have to um, add it to your card and you don't have to do anything special. I'll just look at whoever's kind of in this range of time during the live and a little bit after and I'll throw in a mystery gift for you. So thanks again, everyone. Have a lovely uh, rest of your evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>